know you're crazy. I always said you were crazy. You stay away from me. You think I was afraid? You think I'm crazy? You're a sicko. Welcome to Second Class Cinema, the show where we watch a B movie and immediately discuss. I'm Tom. I'm here with Brittany, Eric, and Tyler. Hi, Tyler. What's up? Does this thing work? Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. It stole a microphone. <laughs> it is on. Too. Everything's working. I can hear everyone. We're all having a great time. Are we not? Always. Yes, not. All right. <laughs> well, we split the room in half because we have watched the movie Don't Go in the House. From 1980, um, it's October, so we decided we're going to watch some horror movies this month. Uh, I mean, pretty unofficially, but officially, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so this was Britney's pick. It was. Uh, so why don't you tell us why you picked this movie? Not really a horror movie, surprisingly. Um, but I was just flipping through free movies on Amazon Prime because I'm a cheap bitch, and <laughs> this movie popped up as... And sold itself as being about a flamethrower wielding madman. So of course I wanted to watch it as soon as Why? possible. What did you yeah, do? so this is the the case where a movie's reason for watching is the actual synopsis. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that was won't make I won't get fooled again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was promised to us in this movie as to why you picked it? So this movie is about a man named Donnie who had an overbearing, abusive, terrible mother. Um, who fucked him up psychologically and when she died he proceeded to deal with her death by buying a World War II fireman suit and <laughs> flame throwing women to death in a secluded bedroom of his home. A secluded bedroom broster. Yeah. <laughs> And never do it. He away made his own bodies. broster. And honestly, I wish I could elaborate more, but nothing fucking happens in this movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, something interesting happened to us when selecting this movie. So we were on Amazon Prime. We see the movie Don't Go in the House, and we go, okay, 1980, 79, or whatever. We'll, we'll watch this movie. We turn the movie on, and it immediately tells us that, no, this movie is not called Don't Go in the House. It is called The Burning. <laughs> and for, for a brief moment, we were excited. We panicked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, there was a little bit of excitement because I thought it was the other, The Burning. With Jason Alexander and Fisher Stevens, yes. That one, and I was like, what? what, what? And <laughs> it's true, you were like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can all attest to this. Yeah. Yep. And then now we watch uh, The Burning instead. So I don't know if there was a different cut, but I will say that The Burning makes way more sense for the title of this movie as opposed to Don't Go in the House because that literally means nothing. Well, it's literally the opposite of what he was trying to do because he was trying to get everyone into his house so he could burn them to death. Yeah, but there was no like... Like when you hear that the title of a movie like that, you'd assume that there's a, a creepy neighbor up the road that's going to be like, don't go in the old crashed house. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that place is haunted. Yeah. But that didn't happen. No. This is the second time I've been on that... that We've run across this situation too, because Shadow Warriors. <laughs> the whole Shadow did Warriors not, debacle yeah. did not deliver. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. What, what did you? What do you guys think? Do you guys think there was any sort of "Don't go in the house"? I think it's more one of those movie titles that's advice to the viewer. You're like, you see the house over there? You shouldn't go in there. Uh. See, I I thought it was gonna be something that like he said to like try to get people to like leave him alone so he could hide the shit he was doing. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's, that's, I mean, that'd be great. I mean, but what a silly me, killer. logic. Yeah, Todd, what about you? I'm, I'm with Eric because uh, as he just looked up, the tagline was also more of a warning. Like, <laughs> we warned you or we, something. We warned that. you or something <laughs> like that. So don't go in the house and we warned you is like the, telling the viewer, eh, let's not watch this one. <laughs> <laughs> Clowns, cut the crap. Let's bust this movie wide open then. Oh, God. Since this movie was very, very tense on our hearts. Yeah, 
it wasn't. No? No. no. Ten- there was no tensity. No tensity? No tension. No tench? No tench. <laughs> All right. So what what do we want to begin with? How do we want to start this discussion? Does anyone have any questions that might launch us into a, a discussion about this movie? I know this one it might be a little difficult. Well, the biggest question I had was the censorship thing. Because on several occasions, it seemed like he characters said one thing you could see their mouth move like they would say bitch or asshole or something and then it would cut away or the dialogue would just cut out um which makes me think that it was censored for some weird reason yeah Mm -hmm. well i I did notice on imdb this was i don't know if this is officially part of like the british video nasties thing you guys familiar with that no the the british government had like identified a bunch of movies uh, a bunch of slasher movies in the 80s as being Uh, video nasties which is maybe the most british way to phrase that you know this is a (laughs) fucked up movie (laughs) <laughs> um, and I don't know if this was. Part Were they like of, banned? Yeah, like oh, I think okay. um, like Driller Killer was one of the big ones I remember, and that movie is pretty tame. Oh, it's a great uh, title. It is, isn't it? It's but, probably um, just like this movie. <laughs> fucking trick. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there might have been a separate cut of this movie, like you had mentioned. Mm. And I'm not sure. I, I could just be speculating here, but there might have been a separate cut to like make it into the British home market. I don't know. There it's, could have it's been a possibility. Well, because what I also noticed too is when we got to the IMDb page that um, that was uh, an hour and twenty two minute runtime. The movie we watched was a ninety minute runtime, so mm. there's an extra eight minutes in there. Yeah. It, it was had, rated R. There though, had wasn't. to have been it some was rated blood R. or some fucking people getting lit on fire <laughs> somewhere in that eight minutes. Because where did the budget of this movie go? Well, the eight minute we saw the eight minutes and that wasn't there. <laughs> Oh, wait, so we saw the longer version? We saw yes. the longer version. All right, I'm fucking pissed. I'm very confused. Now, yeah. <laughs> but no, Tyler brings up a good point. This movie was rated R. It didn't feel like it should have been rated R It did nothing whatsoever. restricted. <laughs> especially, especially in the 70s. Because uh-huh. Bond movies were PG oh, in, yeah. in the 70s. So nothing about this was rated R to me. No. At all. I it had agree. a psycho vibe, but like... Not a creepy psycho vibe. No, it was not effective. Yeah, he didn't... Do, like, like, the actor really didn't bring it enough to make me be like this guy's a f- fucking dweeb yeah well, let's like, talk about donnie for a little bit donnie let's talk worst about actor ever he wasn't great not great zero emotion but the, like i said they may have wanted someone like disaffected and stoic and just like emotionless but which here- if they did nailed it <laughs> <laughs> here's my gripe with that though like you can you can go that character route but you still have to have somebody that has screen presence on. Yeah. Because he was in the movie the entire time. Yeah. And like, literally everyone was a better actor than him. Yes. <laughs> everyone he comes across is better than him. And you just have to you have to have a little bit of like charisma to capture audiences. Yeah, he was even like ineffective at being unemotional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was um pretty much the weakest part of the movie. But he's the and whole movie. But the focal he, point, yeah. <laughs> and, and he is the movie. So that w- that does not uh, that does not bode well for no. the right. for the ratings coming later. Um, it's it's a, like if you took um, like Taxi Driver and you had a lesser actor in there, that movie's nothing. If yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, that's true. That's actually a great analogy. Yeah, very good call. Um, I, I mean, oh, go for it. I was just gonna say, I felt like his actions had no natural progression. Totally agree. Like. His mom died, and then that sent him into like a frenzy of murder. Yeah. But it wasn't even a frenzy; <laughs> it was just like a, Th- three women. a spat. It, it was, was a spat of murder. Just a real <laughs> casual thing. <laughs> what I don't understand is how he went from. I mean, I just don't buy the story. Me I either. don't. I don't buy how he got from A to B to B to C. Like it just doesn't make sense how no one like he's got no friends like no i mean i get like i've read a lot about serial killers and stuff and i feel like they always have a mother issue yes so i get that any problems with little boys you can trace right back to the bitch of a mother (laughs) exactly (laughs) like was that too harsh no okay um (laughs) like every serial (laughs) killer ever either had like an overbearing religious mother a mother who like sexually abused them or something like that and then Either they like worship their mother and they don't do anything wrong until after she dies, or they just like kill and then eventually end up killing her. And well, this one seemed like what you had just mentioned in he didn't do anything until his mother died. Yeah. And he was a good boy. But even so, I feel like her history of like abuse was like, was it that one time? It was one it felt like I mean, one it was time. still pretty bad. Like she held his arms over the stove and like yeah, burnt but- them. But I mean Along those same lines, though, like, don't be a bitch. She's dead. I feel like if she, if if 
<laughs> nothing against my mother. My mother's a wonderful human being, and she would never burn me with an oven. Okay, <laughs> at least not yet. <laughs> but if if that ever happened to me, and then she passes away, I'd want that bitch out of the house immediately. Right. And he just kept her there, and I was like, but she did something terrible to you, and you're keeping her in your house, and like. I Still don't know. visiting her, giving her tea. <laughs> like, she's dead. Yeah. Get rid of her. <laughs> yeah, that was and that was also something I was confused about is so he, he got burnt as a child. He then wants to burn women now that his mother is dead. Uh, and the makeup led me to believe that he burnt his mother. It would seem that way, but like you had mentioned, it could be just regular decomposing makeup. I think it was, yeah, just... Yeah. It putrefied was, flesh. They, well, here it was like black. Here's the problem, though. <laughs> I also it, wrote, "Did he burn mommy?" I also, <laughs> yeah, I did. Is mommy burnt? <laughs> <laughs> the the problem with this movie, and it was, it happened throughout the entire thing. They didn't show us anything. Mm-hmm. Like they showed us burning him, burning one person in in the actual incinerator thing, yeah. and that was it. They, there was no. They skipped gore. the other two, like. It, they didn't show you anything. They, they were just pushing the plot with him yeah. and Bobby, and that was it. We got two men on fire, yeah. barely. Yeah, one in the beginning and one at the end. Um, yeah, it was it was mostly like poor poor building of tension, and then no release of that tension. Yeah. yeah. So it was just like a, a like an old rubber band, just kind of being slowly stretched, and then maybe you close up a potato chip bag with it <laughs> and then then you're done with the movie <laughs> and then that's it and then yeah you... i wish there was more setup because i feel like this whole thing pops off in like the first 15 minutes of yeah. the movie mm-hmm. like the incident at his work where he just like watches some guy getting burned and does nothing and then his mom's dead and then he's just killing people all within yeah. the first 15 minutes and that yeah. actually gave me I high f- hopes for the movie too <sighs> I, see i was like mm. that we weren't, you weren't feeling it well i was hoping that if they were going that route they were just gonna break neck mm-hmm. speed into people getting incinerated yeah exactly oh, which they did so. and didn't because we didn't a see any of it mm-hmm. um only like three people got killed mm-hmm. and <sighs> the fucking thing that bothers me the most is that he built this metal coated room or just coated a room in like metal p- sheets or whatever. Yes. And that's where he did all his burning. We never got to see this flamethrower in the wild. Like I wanted to see him like chasing women down alleyways, <laughs> like yes. roasting yeah. them alive. That's what that's, that's what my aspirations yeah. for this movie were. That was the movie in my head too. I agree. Yes. We yeah. all wanted the disco to Empty go parking open garage. Flamethrower. Yeah. Flame yeah, when when the the synopsis said that he was terrorizing people, I think that was the word yeah. they chose. Terrorizing. I imagined him like chasing people down, <laughs> exactly. terrorizing because, women. Because, multiple. because anyone can do anything in the privacy of their own home. Yeah. When you yeah. take it outside of your home, I feel like is when it's truly terrifying. Yeah. This is America. If I want to build a tin room and burn women in it, that's that's my choice. <laughs> that's I think that's prerogative. in the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's in the that's that's uh, Amendment uh, seventy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the the Ariel Castro law. Yes, correct. Um, all right, so we're pretty clearly gonna hammer this fucking movie. Yeah. Gonna, <laughs> gonna hammer it down. Does anyone else have anything they want to bring up uh, um, as well? I have a risk. If you guys want to, oh, we haven't done one of those in a long time. Risk. I oh, someone's I have one taking more the Ukraine. Question right. slash criticism. Do it. All right. Um, so we are led to believe that the reason Donnie is killing these women is because he's still hearing a voice inside his head that's telling him to do it. Yes. Uh-huh. Which throughout the whole movie, I feel like. Changed. We are led to believe it's the voice of his mother. Uh, and did the, anyone else get that impression? I, it seemed like it might have been her, but then sometimes it's the voice of her victim. I was of gonna, his victims, rather. Hmm. I was going to say uh, that um, I feel like he heard those voices throughout his life. I was. Mm. I'm on the same page as yeah, you. Yeah, because because he responded to them without hesitation. Yeah. Um, and when his mother mother's voice did come up it was only when she was moving and same thing for the for the woman he killed okay because then i feel like we're led to believe this whole time he's killing because his mother is telling him to do so and because of the trauma he experienced as a child but then at the end we're just fucking like railroaded with this weird end scene of a little kid watching tv and then getting the shit slapped out of him by his mom and then the voices come to him so i was like is well, this just like shitty mom syndrome? Like <laughs> that's how it kicks in and your kid becomes a killer? Or is this like a malevolent force? 
That's interesting. Because that's a fucking weird curveball to throw in the last 30 seconds of your movie. <laughs> right, to throw in some supernatural shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think so. I think it's it, it was supposed to show how cyclical it all is yeah. and, and, and abuse in the home and how it can affect someone. And they just happened to yeah. cho- choose the exact same circumstance twice, okay. which is maybe why I made that bitch of a mother exclamation earlier, because this movie <laughs> warped me into hating women. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think the oh, movie had anything oh, oh. to do with that. Oh, shit. I can't <laughs> say those words anymore. I can't say that. Um, yeah. So, Tyler, what was your risk? Um, it was a silly risk, but he did. <laughs> he kissed one of the burning corpses. And yeah. I was like, that's probably not healthy for him. I was <laughs> like, that's a major health risk. Definitely. Uh, that was my big risk. <laughs> Just within the context of the movie. Within the context of the movie. And it, it, like, it's also weird to do it only once. <laughs> Maybe he like, didn't like it. Like, have him do it to every single person that he's burning up then. Yeah, you'd think if it was, like, a sexual thing. Yeah. Like, like it He just, seemed like... He didn't identify at all. Like, no. Like, I have no idea what Why? type of character this yeah. guy is. Even he seemed like he didn't care about what he was doing. Mm. Like, he wasn't like, I need... Like, he didn't have, like, a compulsion to do it. He was just like, oh, like, somebody said I had to do this, so here I go. He even, like, (laughs) stops halfway through the movie and tries to turn over a fucking new leaf. And you're just like, I don't understand the old leaf. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't know. Although, I I did have one plus. Uh, Okay. If I can share it before we get too deep. Share it. Um... The actual concept of this movie is terrifying mm. outside of the execution of it on film. Okay, so what particular... Like, if you suddenly learned... Like, we all know about the Dahmers and the Gacy's and the Bundys of the world, but if you learned about a dude who burnt women to death and then, like, propped their, like, charred Kept corpses yeah. up around his yeah. house and, like, talked to them like they were part of his family, like, that's some fucking ghoulish shit. If that happened in real life, I would find that absolutely terrifying. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. the one thing that he had that a lot of other serial killer, killers probably don't have is he was completely alone. He didn't have it, really any friends that would go see him. Yeah. His neighbors, like, we never saw a single neighbor. Uh, his cir- <laughs> his circumstances were, like, pretty le- ideal for a serial killer. Yeah. Means this movie would be pretty ripe for a remake. Which like, we all should make because we all came up with better ideas <laughs> every step of the way. Because all I can think about is like the serial killers that I can that I'm familiar with that have like recorded their crimes and like finding like a tape of some guy with like fucking charred bodies that he like mm. treats lovingly. Oh God, that's nasty. But then alternates between being really abusive towards. Yes. Them. Yeah. Like that's a mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> I almost wonder if the script for this movie, like the the writing, was actually solid. It's just the execution kind of let it down. I think the writing wasn't bad. Yeah, this is because I mean, well, when you see like the other actors in this movie, they actually do a really good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the acting is nothing amazing, but I think they carry the movie very well. But the only problem is they're a very limited portion of this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah there wasn't a lot of relief from our main our main guy. I yeah. think there needs to be a remake. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna vote remake starring The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> As Donnie. <laughs> See, I don't know if I'd believe that. No, <laughs> The Rock no. is definitely Bobby. The Rock Best is Bobby. Bobby. But, so Kevin Hart is Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> but if The Rock... The Rock would draw the woman, though, into his car. Like, yeah. Like, better sure. than what Donnie was doing. Well, see, Donnie was... Donnie was just a terrible person. I don't know why anyone even spoke to him. <laughs> but there was a moment in the movie where these two drunk hitchhiker women, they get into his car, they ask him for a ride to a bar, and he starts lying, straight up lying for the, seems like the first time in his life. <laughs> and, and he was doing really well. And for a minute, I was like, yeah, Donnie, like, roll with it. Don- like, you know, you, you're doing things right. You're saying the right words. Don't turn into a psycho later. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he turns into the psycho later. Yeah. But. You know, he had it for a second. I was like, all right, maybe it's not so You know bad. who you know who I'd love, to be honest with you? I don't know why it popped into my head. To play Donnie? Yes. Who? Carrie Always. Huh. No, it yeah, makes that's, sense. That's good casting. Like I his think kiss he would the girl character nail it. is very like sensitive and like trustworthy. Yeah. Yeah. Like the guy you just are like, Oh, he's a dweeb, like nobody has to worry about him. <laughs> Those are always the ones you have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, Especially if they work at a chocolate factory like Jeffrey Dahmer. Really? Oh, <laughs> did he work at a chocolate factory? Yeah, I did not know that. He He's did. a regular Willy Wonka. <laughs> so did another serial killer, Dean Coral. 
Don't trust anyone that works at a fucking chocolate factory. Oh, clearly. <laughs> so two out of... <laughs> up to including Willy Wonka. <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. Just to be on the safe side. Two, yeah, okay. Willy Wonka did actually... Like, <laughs> He's like a straight-up murderer. Ter- terrible things <laughs> when you think about it. Well, he, he enslaved all the Oompa Loompas. I mean, that's not right. Well, yeah, but but think about all the terrible things that happened to the kids that got inside there. Oh, Those they that, deserved uh, it. No, no, no. That's definitely against OSHA standards. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be receiving a uh, $5,000 fine any minute now. <laughs> um... All right, so any any sort of other positive notes to go on top of what Brittany was saying here? I honestly, all I did this movie was just think about how silly it was while it was happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we spent a lot of this movie just making fun of it. Yeah. And it was fun to make fun of. It was fun to make fun of. <laughs> because our main guy is such a dweeb, and he is a such really- Such a bad actor. <laughs> he's a really easy target, mm-hmm. and you can download a lot of awful things on him, and I think that's what we did. I think this movie committed the Cardinal sin. Okay. It was boring. <gasps> if you have a movie where the main <laughs> like point of it is a guy kills people with a flamethrower, it has no business being boring. So you should be ashamed. Can we talk about one of the the, the longest lasting scenes in this movie where the our shopping main scene goes to buy a disco outfit? Yeah, <laughs> oh why God. do we get a sh- like five minutes? It's not a montage, but I'm gonna call it a montage. Why do we get a shopping montage in a serial killer movie? <laughs> no, see, it would have been okay it's if so we got awkward. If there was a payoff, there was no payoff. Well, if we had gotten an actual <laughs> montage, I would have been game because yeah. that means they had condensed a longer scene into something smaller, more palatable, so we can move on and but, keep the energy up. <laughs> more importantly, why do we even need that scene? We don't. <laughs> yeah, but he goes to a store and David Bowie's skeleton helps him pick out a disco tuxedo. Now, right. That guy was awesome. He should have been the main character. But think about how creepy. awesome was. our version would have been for a second. Though. Okay. What would we have done? Our, ver- our version <laughs> would have been we would have did the try it on scene. Ooh. Oh, where yeah. it would have been like him walking out in a bunch of different outfits. Oh, yeah. And the other guys watching him and saying yes or no. I right? feel like if you're going to have that scene, that's the only fucking way to do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're not going to do that, Let's then do I don't, I'm not interested. I know. Instead of talking about like uh, disco collar, like neck measurement, neck measurements. <laughs> he didn't know what it's, size shoes he had. So if he, he did, didn't. No, he still did he I said that. that. <laughs> he said that. No, because they asked the, the Skeletor guy <laughs> asked him what size shoe he was was and he says oh i don't know oh maybe, i thought he maybe was maybe like a nine i thought he was asking about his uh his his collar size but yeah, no he I did ask okay. about his collar size. and he knew oh, his collar that, size. he knew his collar size. that Honestly, just shows I how fucking that, terrible and i thought he movie. said tie nope nope it was, I was like, shoe size like ties come in sizes <laughs> yeah i take my tie in a nine <laughs> <laughs> it was shoe size so this guy didn't try anything on I bet well you- i think it's because they wanted to drop the bomb on us when he was in the disco club and they were like look at this dude looking fresh to death I was about to drop a not <laughs> Take a sec. Take a breather. You don't want to go a little no, too nuts. It was uh, right there, and then I pushed it back. Yeah, look <laughs> at this dude looking fresh to death, and he's going to mack on some ladies. But he didn't look that wrong. fresh. Wrong. I mean, wrong. compared. Comparatively. He looked way better than he has... Like, he definitely didn't look like someone who was burning people to death in his house. Yeah. <laughs> goal one. That's what, I, <laughs> when, when I get dressed in the morning, that's what I go for. As long as I don't look like I'm burning women. I look the women. least psychotic. Yeah. And that, and that whole scene was a pretty interesting scene. I'd say that was, uh, that was a little frustrating to watch. The actual disco? The actual disco. Because that almost turned into something good. I was going to say, that's, that's <sighs> the only one that really felt like there was real tension. And one of the, one of the positives I do have written down mm. is that this movie nails the uncomfortable silence. Which I feel like a lot of movies don't even attempt or they don't do well. But there was a portion of the scene where uh, one of the ladies that he sits down with, like they just kind of have this natural lull in the conversation and it's very uncomfortable. And for a second, I was like, something's about to go very wrong. <laughs> mm. and, and it, it sort of does. <laughs> it definitely does, at least for her. Yeah. I wonder if it was intentional, if it was just... Poor direction. <laughs> poor writing and acting and direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. But it worked. Even if it was a happy accident. I'm so upset we didn't get to see more things fucking burn. <laughs> well, well, back on the, the disco inferno scene, w- <laughs> which would be... So what happens is... is the the date he's on that he he gets hooked up with Bobby who's a cheating jerk his friend who I have no idea how they became friends I feel like they bonded over a burning body yeah they're uh, just like hey I helped him out you didn't let's be I pals can see this movie in my head <laughs> the movie that this is supposed the to good be one. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good it's so frustrating it's it, it almost uh, it didn't almost make it <laughs> <laughs> but it, it put all the pieces there it did like 
just it just didn't do any of them right. Yeah. Well, I mean, in in this disco scene, um, you know, he has like a crazy flashback to when he was abused as a child, and someone's trying to get him to dance his date, and he grabs a candle and just like shoves it in her face and lights her hair on fire. Yeah. No. See. And then we really hoped that because then he then he casually walks out of the club, but we were hoping that he was casually walking to the trunk of his car to grab the flamethrower yes. to go back into the club. Yeah. And flamethrow everybody and terrorize yeah. women. The yeah. opening of that she- scene should have been an exterior of the club, lights flashing, people dancing, disco inferno in light. He gets humiliated, leaves, grabs the flamethrower, comes back, and exterminates everyone. It's not that hard, people. <laughs> so here's the question: If we did remake this, would we do it as a period piece that takes place in the seventies, and we're yes. definitely calling it disco inferno? Yes. yes. One hundred. Okay. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> the only way we can get this this to work. Um, oh, it's so frustrating. And right. then by the time you think it's gonna pop off and people are gonna be on fire, I was like, I don't even care anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Our- <laughs> like when he lights the priest on fire, I was like, oh shit, is he about to burn down the house? No. Nope. And then like the other seventy five percent of me was like, you know what? I don't even fucking care. <laughs> Just lo- you lost me. Yeah. And then it, yeah, and then the end didn't quite pay off at all. Um, and had, he, we didn't even see the the house burn from the outside at the end e- either. Did it even burn down? It's, yeah, they. I they, think it's assumed. Yeah, it yeah. Well, uh, in the scene, the 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 like the fo- following final scene, the kid that's listening to the news, uh, they say something about the fact that the old Kohler house yeah, burned the down, whole burned thing down. burned down or something like that. Yeah. 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 It's uh, something the the circumstances are seen as subs- uh, suspicious. So Donnie yeah. kills himself at the end because he's hallucinating that his corpse crispy corpses are coming back to like <laughs> let me tell you my favorite avenge. kind of donut crispy corpse <laughs> especially around halloween <laughs> love it and mom they all like they all like corner him and then he like just burns the house down yeah. pretty good yeah. that was like the weakest ending it was because so you know bobby shows up the the priest shows up he burns the priest down. Bobby goes in, saves the ladies, and then that's it. That's it. They're over. We never get that. Never gets never addressed. Never see him again. Yeah. They don't even like address the guy coming out of the house on fire. No, they're they... not even there to greet him. No, and you know what? That's not fair because this movie spent. Oh wait, no, didn't Bobby? Bobby, up with Bobby his puts him out yeah. with. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. So we know the priest lives. Oh shucks, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. But still, this still. movie spent a lot of time doing things it didn't have to, like shopping for, for disco shirts, <laughs> uh, when they could have actually spent resolving plot. Like why Bobby gave a shit in the first place. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. make sense. Like, like why did he go all the way to the priest? Like how did he, like, this guy has no friends. <laughs> and then, well, he's got nobody. <laughs> Who is <Why's> Bobby? <laughs> Your a coworker. <laughs> yeah, it, like he's a concerned coworker. He sees you know, this 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 loner that can't quite handle plus the other bo- people that are are giving right. him shit. All right, yeah. I'm gonna lay down the Maybe circumstances for you with Bobby right now. <laughs> spit some truth. I'm gonna spit some truth right now <laughs> on Bobby. <laughs> All right, so Bobby knows Donnie doesn't have anything else. Yeah. Right. Bobby knows that Donnie doesn't talk to anybody. Bobby knows he likes to get his dick wet. Right. <laughs> so Bobby's gonna get his dick wet. And use Donnie as the wingman so that, like, this chick that wants to get with Bobby is not by herself with her girlfriend, right? Like, so she's bringing her girlfriend. Bobby's like, fuck, I got to find somebody. I I need a partner in crime that's not going to tell anything to my wife, my kids. Like, this needs to be on the down low, right? So who does he pick? He picks the one guy that doesn't talk to anybody that doesn't have any friends, of course. Yeah, Bobby does seem like he would do that kind of cold calculated shit. (laughs) But, but that girl didn't have any problems, like, getting a dude to talk to her. Yeah, well, what also is, so, uh, I believe it was Donnie who called Bobby out of the blue, and Bobby didn't even know that this was going on. That's true. And so Donnie calls him, so like... He's like, got two live ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Bobby's like, well, hey, heads well, up. Well, because he said that, I feel like that's th- this happens very frequently, though. I mean... For Bobby. Not, I'm not saying he invites Donnie all the time. I'm saying for Bobby, he he may oh, miss yeah. out on these opportunities quite a bit, right? So why mm. not reel in a... Uh, a real geek. A <laughs> real nerd that doesn't <laughs> talk to anybody else. But why is that a good thing? It's a good thing for Bobby. It yeah. is? Makes Bobby look like... Uh, well, yeah, because he doesn't have to worry about anyone blabbing about what he's doing. Yeah. That's true. If you're cheating on your wife, you don't want her to find out. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, Wait, you don't? I guess. Wait. He's like all... I mean, Donnie has is a sick old llama. Yeah, I guess. All right, I guess that makes sense. I know. I, I, Bobby had like ulterior motives. I think, in on some respects, I think he wanted to get Donnie out of his own shell. 
but on the other hand, he also wanted to do his own thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like a he was a he was the he was the only type A for this movie. This is. We, we were giving him way more complexity than he actually had. Yeah. Well, no, he earned it. Because yeah. the guy I who mean, played Bobby had, was actually good. We had to do something to make it through the hour and a half of this movie. So we all latched on to Bobby, wished he had played the main character. Um, any Anything else we'd like to, to touch on before we... Get, do we have any favorite parts that we want to discuss? I just had one favorite part. It was just a line. Okay. Uh, Donnie says this to all the burnt up corpses, I think. He says, don't make me do anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept telling them not to laugh at him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was funny because uh, there was a point in the movie where, you know, Donnie was, you know, ripping into these corpses, you know, yelling at them for stuff. Tyler starts laughing. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this uh, he leaves the room. Donnie leaves the room. He goes into another room and he yells, stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> he was that, talking to you. Tyler. That happened a lot. I feel it like he was, he was addressing me quite a bit because I was just like not giving up. Well, cause, and also, I mean, because if you were laughing at what he was saying, and he was worried that these dead people were actually laughing at him, he was projecting that his, I mean, that means his self-image was spot on. Yeah. And that's why he hated himself so much. <laughs> uh, <sighs> any, any other favorite Gosh. parts? Cause... I wrote something down, but I honestly... You wrote it, you read it. You know the rules. <laughs> you know the rules. Um, I just wrote down the part where he was, like, at the beach, and all that shit was burning and exploding, but it was, like, a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Because at the end of it, there was just a hole in the ground, and all of his victims dragged him into it. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Um, I was like, that's kind of cool. Like, mm. if you were a real murderer and you had a dream like that, I imagine it would be pretty fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah. The end. Even if I wasn't a real murderer. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. That would terrify me. That would terrify anyone. Just a pit of putrifying burnt corpses. And it's all your fault. Yeah. Eric, what about you? Do you have any favorite really parts? Uh, I do. All right. Um, Donnie's reaction after he finds out his mom is dead, uh, blast disco, jump on the furniture, and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real rebel, that Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and um, the, the closing credits theme song uh -huh. is a funky disco song where it sounds like they're singing, stop, bad movie. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Over and over and over again. Yeah, and then they scream now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't really... Honestly, I only had questions written down. <laughs> As you should. I only had questions. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's, it's hard when you're having fun watching the movie because you're having a good time. And then I'm not. I don't want to give the movie too much credit for that. No, no, that was us. That so. I tried to just write down any connections I could make to like real life serial serial killers, all that type of stuff, because I knew we needed something to talk about, and this movie didn't give us a lot to talk about. No. I mean, it's 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 tough because uh, what was the movie with um, Marvelous Marvel? What was that called? Uh, Blood Harvest. Marvel Blood Harvest. Yeah. At your service. Like, that movie kind of suffered from some of the same problems this one did, but for some reason this one was more fun to watch, mm. and I kind of wonder why that is. Like, what? What it, is it? Oh, is it that this is just bad in a very specific way? But it's also not bad in the way that like Samurai Cop is bad. You know. There's so many layers like, of yeah. bad. So many layers of bad. I feel like we need to sit down and really draw it out. And like, I feel like what you like depends on what type of person you are. Yeah. Like some people like movies because they have like bad dialogue or bad effects or something like that. Some people like... People like grimy... Yeah. Like sex stuff. Yeah. Yeah, some, some people, people do, like Tom. <laughs> Well, there are a lot of sickos out there. Astute observation. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> like, like grimy sex stuff. Like, like an innocent <laughs> housewife. <laughs> well, I feel I do feel like that this movie did allow us to use our imaginations more than a lot of other mo movies probably would. Interesting. Yeah, because true. we went down our own paths as to what they could do next, but what they won't do next kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. That's that was kind point. of a fun game to play. It was. <laughs> I think this is going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> I like the thing that happened in my head much better. <laughs> yeah. All Typically. the things that were happening in the Because we were holding heads. out hope every step of the way. We with were. this movie, which is like something to be said, I feel like. As, as, almost as bad as this movie is. <laughs> well, I mean, there was even a, a moment where, Eric, I'm pretty sure you said something along the lines <laughs> of, well, maybe this movie will pop off in the last five minutes. Yeah. Right. And I was like, okay, so we're really hoping... We're still holding out hope <laughs> that at least the last five minutes will have something. Like something. Because everything that we've well, watched led us to believe that there might be something. Because we watched a lot of movies. Bad ones, good ones, medium ones. <laughs> <laughs> and we know how a movie can fucking turn on a dime. Yeah, And just true. go into starlight territory. <laughs> Stargrove territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stargrove. 
Yes. Uh, it doesn't right. happen very often, but it can happen. Can. Is it time for writing? So let's rate it then. Yeah, I'm gonna go. With yeah, fuck I'm gonna you. have to give it an unfortunate fuck off. Oh my god, my fucking father. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah! All right, guys, let's rate. Don't go in the house slash the burning, not the good one. Let's uh, let's let's rate. Who wants to begin? Who would like to start? All right, someone made a sound. <laughs> It was That's Eric. my rating. <laughs> uh, all right, my ratings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Eric. Uh, I'm gonna give it a fuck you, but without the anger. Okay. Um, like a dismiss, like fuck yeah, you. Yeah, fuck, fuck you. Yeah. Like it's it's not a very good movie. Um, but I can see that there was probably a decent script and decent writing behind it. And if it had a budget and acting to follow suit with it, it would probably be a pretty well remembered horror movie. Instead of, um, I mean, it seems like there is a cult following around this thing. I'm not sure I understand why. Uh, it seems like Quentin Tarantino really endorsed this at one point. Oh. Um, that nah, doesn't say much, but... Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's a lot of potential in this, and I feel like it's been left on the... the, the it's been... I've been left wanting. So I know there's a good movie somewhere underneath there, and it just maybe it just needs to be remade. I think it could be really, truly fantastic. Yeah. But as it stands, it's not very good, but it is a lot of fun to watch and make fun of. So I can't give it, like, a true, like, ah, just get the fuck out of here. That, this sucks. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah, there is some satisfaction to potentially be derived. Yeah, there and is entertainment to be wrung out. Yeah, and I mean the technical quality is not great, but it is relatively competently shot. There's a couple of interesting shots throughout the movie that I thought were kind of cool. Yeah. So it's not completely bereft of artistic integrity or anything. It just sucks. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I mean that was that was really good, and and I mean we watched it on Amazon Prime free. It was. <laughs> it looked good. It was solid HD. Whatever they did, I think they must have restored had a restoration on this because it looked good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, very well said. Anyone else? Anyone um, else going to give it a higher than a fuck you? I was not going to give it higher than a fuck you. <laughs> um, I feel like it just, as a movie, brought nothing to the table. It wasn't scary. It wasn't funny. I wasn't compelled by the story. It had a story to tell and it told it, but like just barely. Um, like maybe if somebody had exhausted like all of their B movie options and they had never seen this, I would be like, maybe. like Because apparently some people, like you said, think really highly of it. Um, I am not one of those people, unfortunately. I, I think maybe the people who do like it maybe take these types of movies a little more serious than I think we might. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I'm not looking at every movie like a joke, but also when I'm watching movies like this, they do have to earn a bit of respect in the beginning if I'm going to end up coming around and, and enjoying it not in a ironic way or anything like that yeah so i mean maybe that's why people like it because i can see that this movie didn't feed that part of anyone yeah. you know? like for me i feel like you have to at least hit one of several points like one or more you have to have a good story or you have to have like really convincing compelling acting or you have to have awesome special effects mm -hmm. nothing none yeah. of that yeah zero for sure so yeah i would pass i mean it's not the worst movie i've ever seen but yeah. Yeah, it was a disappointment to watch for October. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you know, I feel like I'm easy to please. I, I'm not. I'm not asking for a lot. I uh, all I want are things to be exactly the way I want them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and all I want is everything. And when they aren't, I say fuck you. <laughs> are you giving this a fuck you? Yeah. Is that your rating? That's my rating. All right. I'm gonna give it a medium fuck you. <laughs> Thanks for the medium, <laughs> Brady. All right. Medium well. All right, so uh, did, yeah, probably medium <laughs> well, considering medium all the burn victims in this movie. <laughs> Hell! All right, Tyler. I, mean, I have no explanation. Any, no, no, nothing to add. I have nothing to add. You all said it. Just a very indifferent fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no. The only reason that it's indifferent is because I had a good time watching it with you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there are those fuck yous that just give you nothing to hold on to. Yeah. Yep. yeah. The we're whole not. time everyone's just like, this sucks. Where we just come stomping in here like, we have to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> and more than like being laughable, like making, giving us jokes to make about it. I feel like this movie was just like a catalyst for us to be in that mood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can't even give it like a lot of credit for making us crack up or anything. Yeah, no. But it was mostly just us cracking each other. <laughs> That's very true. We're a very self-indulgent crew. <laughs> um, now... Which one of us do you think liked it the most? Because none of us, none of us fucking hated it, right? But we all give it like a, some form of fuck you. Yeah. I, I want to know who we actually <laughs> think liked it the most. I think you liked it the most. <laughs> Me! Because you had the least amount of things written down. 
You're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Eric because when he talked about uh, positives, he said he wrote a few down, yeah. but he only mentioned one. So <laughs> I'm going to say that Eric huh. Eric might have liked it the most. Eric? Well, I mean, one of them was, <laughs> one of the positives I wrote down was, uh, cool but entirely inappropriate disco soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> and the other sure. one was I like Bobby which was crossed out <laughs> I'm so glad you decided to share those with us <laughs> oh man sounds like like notes from second grade <laughs> I like Bobby okay um yeah I was looking at you guys and I was like I'm pretty sure everyone here hates this more than I do but that's that's what I have to I'm say. I'm actually astounded by how he. What are you astounded by? How he lured these women to his house. Mm. Yeah, that's it was the so weirdest shady. part. That's the least believable part about this movie. Like you're basically this movie's about <laughs> setting people on fire with a flamethrower <laughs> within your mother's <laughs> attic. And the least <laughs> believable part, and she's still in the house. But the the least believable part is him getting women to go home. <laughs> well, after he harasses them and then is like, can I give you a ride? And they're just like, sure. Yeah. I mean, he definitely took advantage Ugh. of idiots hitchhiking. They um, were all idiots. They were born victims. Their names were like <laughs> Kathy. Su- Suzanne. Fucking Suzanne. <laughs> they were born victims. Cheryl. You're a born victim with a name like Kathy. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Oof. Um, Rough. I will say, especially though, in 1980, the uh, the first woman that he pulled into his house, uh, she all she wanted nothing to do with this guy. Yeah, yeah. the whole Absolutely. time, the whole time, whole time. She should have just walked out. <laughs> while he was like upstairs. Yeah, yeah. the Instead only of reason that around. she went with him was because there were slightly creepier guys. <laughs> I would out. take my chances with those guys. <laughs> yeah, they didn't work yeah. at the chocolate factory. Like two guys <laughs> on the street or one guy in a truck. You get in that truck, you might never come back. So. <laughs> Take a chance on the street, girl. It's <laughs> my slogan when I run for president. <laughs> Take your chances on the street, girl. Brady McCarthy, 2020. 2020. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Final thoughts. Oh, I have a final thought. Think about it. Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> Nobody knew the meaning when, of that. When did they invent stop, drop, and roll? Uh, obviously, 1981. <laughs> can, I, can I look it up? Yeah, uh, let's find out. Do we, do we all want to put bets on this? No. Nah. No. Nah. Are you not interested at all? What stop no, and roll? No, I do want to know. Was invented. Oh wait, guys, that probably shouldn't be my slogan. I might get accused of being a social justice warrior. Oh, <laughs> don't go at, don't go SJW on us. <laughs> <laughs> Which I had to Google. I was like SJW. <laughs> So that that's how I know I'm not. <laughs> that means you're a normal human being. So, you don't uh, even know what it means. <laughs> who? Somebody was like, what is that? Something Jezebel woman? <laughs> I was like, so close. Very, very so, close. So, so close. Uh, this is very important for everyone listening. Yeah. Well, they got to know. Um, okay. Let's do this. Um, someone said uh, Dick Van Dyke. What? <laughs> no, it was DMX. DMX. Oh, yeah. DMX did the stop, drop, and roll. Stop, stop drop, drop, and roll. Shut it down, open it. up, roll. <laughs> All right, hold on. Stop, drop, and roll. Wikipedia. Uh, not what I... Nope, this isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. No, no. This song... Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. What uh, the... F- just tell I- me when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, do I have to aid you in this search? I'm not doing good. <laughs> all right, all right. Everyone find out what Stop, Drop, and Roll is invented so we can well, stop the podcast. I Wikipedia Stop, Drop, and Roll, and there's a yeah. procedure section. One, stop. <laughs> two, two, drop. Guess what the third one is? Roll. You're absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, is it a bread roll, or is it a... <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a dinner roll. Different roll. Hold on. Now, I'm just looking at uh, picture diagrams of how to stop, drop, and roll. And this is pretty great. There's a uh, cartoon Dalmatian stop dropping and rolling. There's several children showing how to stop drop and roll. One the of them late was on 1970s. fire. The late 1970s. Yeah, it uh, was Dick Van Dyke. Actually, I was going to say. So it, I knew it. If it was the late 1970s, the one thing with with the people not stop dropping and rolling in this movie is they were all adults. Ah. So the f- they weren't brought up on it. Mm-hmm. So maybe they didn't necessarily have that knowledge. The first ever fire safety PSA was Stop, Drop, and Roll starring Dick Van Dyke. Okay. Yep. I think I found the best one, though, because there's one of Cookie Monster showing how to stop, <laughs> drop, and roll. <laughs> and here's the thing. During the roll step, he's acquired a cookie. Will oh, oh, Look at this. Look at this. Uh, okay. Stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes catch fire, stop, drop, get a cookie, and roll. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's over. 
Now you guys know Stop, Drop, and Roll, Dick Van Dyke, 1979. We watched that movie. It was okay. <laughs> and we'll link you the video of Cookie Monster. <laughs> Stop, Roll. It's just an infographic. <laughs> <laughs> not even an animated GIF. Oh, no. Um, God damn it. Sorry. All right. So that's it, right? We're done. That's it. We're done. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully we bring you guys right. something better for Halloween month. Yeah. We'll something s- actually fucking spooky. Yeah. I really want to pick some gruesome shit, but. Yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe. We'll, we'll have some time. Tyler, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Watching uh, the movie. Thanks Welcome for back. having Sorry. me. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. This usually isn't the type of movie we watch with you. Usually it's got Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk Hogan, Hogan always telescopes. Hulk Hogan. I mean. Yeah. Billy Blanks. Neither Billy of Blanks. those. None of that stuff. None yeah. of that. We're no. due to watch another Billy Blanks movie, like real. Yeah. yeah. Like, right now ish. I would say we were due, long overdue for that. Yeah. When was <laughs> Expecto? That was over a year ago, right? Expecto Mercy was over a year ago. Way over a year ago. Um, all right, so that's it. If you'd like more information on our show, you can head on to Facebook, facebook.com slash second class cinema. If you'd like to listen to our show, you can go on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, secondclasscinema.com, followingfilms.com. You can also find us on Twitter at 2ND Class Podcast and Instagram, second class cinema, and email us at second class cinema at gmail.com. <coughs> yada, yada, yada. Stop bad movie. Stop. Drop. Shut bad up movie. <laughs> Stop, Stop, drop. Shut them down, open up, roll. Stop, Stop, drop. drop. Bad Bad movie. movie. Stop. Stop, drop. Bad movie. Stop, guys.